I drilled out this stone for an electrode connection, but it ended up being a dud. After reviewing earth batteries and building my new magnesium crystal cells, a new question came up. Can ordinary stones and rocks be used as crystal cells? Well, that's what I'm going to test out in this video. And I'm going to pick out a few more interesting ones. S something like this. This kind of looks like a quartz. Haven't had much luck with them. Same with these dark ones. Not much activity with these dark ones. I think they're a little too dense and he'd be a little bit porous. This one next to it. Kind of a little bit of orange in there. Might be some... Might be some kind of iron ore maybe. I could probably try this one out. The first thing that I learned is that you have to be aware of what you're testing these stones with. Uh, for the positive base, I'm going to be using carbon graphite blocks. And then I'll be using a piece of paper towel as a membrane in between the carbon and the stone. And I'm going to be using alum water as an electrolyte. Had a lot of that left. But what I found out is that if I just use the probes off the meter, it'll register a voltage. See, so look at that. Quarter, quarter of a volt almost. There's a third of a volt. I don't know what these leads are made out of, but they're reacting with the electrolyte with a voltage. So what I had to do, I had to come up with a different kind of probe. And this here is a carbon fiber graphite rope. So what I used on my uh, magnesium crystal cells, and that's what I'm going to be using to probe these rocks with, test them with. Still get a little bit of voltage, but it's about the least reactive thing I could find. And I will test out a few of these stones I picked out with my carbon fiber graphite rope probe. Start with this one here. 0.296.5. This is that iron ore looking one that I just picked out. But it might not be soaked down as much as those other ones with alum. 0.268. Yeah, it looks like that's all we're going to get. Try this cream colored one here. Is that's up to pretty good, 0.355 volts. It's over a third of a volt. That's this cream-colored one right there. Hmm. Interesting, that one. 0.36. Touching a little bit lower. And he's out of the way. This is like a quartz looking one. There's a quarter of a volt over. Hmm. And this is a just a gray one. This one didn't soak up electrolyte too good. It's pretty hard. This is setting just as long as that uh, quartz one for soaking up electrolyte. I'm not getting hardly anything out of this one. It's kind of a buggy. This one here. 0.32 volts. Point three two volts. 0 0.34, 0 0.36, 0 0.37. Pretty decent on that one. And 
This is a piece of iron pirate in it, I found. And this one is gone negative on me. You notice that? And uh, I know these can act like a detector, a diode. See how the meter is gone negative on that one? Some of them I find out there, that's what they do. Don't understand quite why it's doing that. It's like the carbon block is the negative and the carbon fiber rope is acting like a positive, like that's the way the current's flowing. It's interesting. Now I'll try some bigger rocks. I got some bigger rocks here that got rubber band to the carbon blocks. I want to get some more surface area on there. So a little bit more. And I also drilled holes into each of these. And I put an electrode to get a good contact. And I use this wire right here. T304 stainless steel wire. It's not as corrosive resistance as the carbon fiber rope, but it was like the next best thing. And we'll test these out right here. Uh, let's see. Get a connection. So this is the rock. I'm not touching that. I'm going to show you the difference between the electrode or the wire, the stainless steel wire, and just the rock. This is just the rock. Maybe you can't see it. Let me hold it differently. This is just the rock. Now I'll touch the wire. A little higher voltage with the wire. And try this rock here too. This is my best rock right here, this kind of speckled egg one. So far that I found. It's almost a half a volt. Touch the look at that. Whoops, another. That's the wire, and this is just touching the rock. Half a volt with that one right there. That's the difference. <laughs> These ones here, they were duds. This one here, it kind of broke, and it's so hard. You know, on the outside, it looked like a kind of a creamy brown color, but the inside is dark. And it, it, these are duds right there. Now I wanted to test the current on these bigger rocks here, just being shorted through the meter. Not a whole lot of surface area here. It's probably like less than one square inch. Uh, it's about 18 milliamps, or microamps. This is microamps, DC microamps. So over here, a little better. This was always my best rock here so far, this speckled egg-looking one. I should hook a few of them together now to see what happens when we do that. And now we have a whole bunch of rocks in a series, connected in a series. Get the voltage up there. And this, some guy's charging a capacitor. You know, all these rocks that I got lined up here, it's just that little bit of surface area where they're contacted with the carbon graphite blocks. I just wanted to get them all connected in a series to get the voltage up. You're getting it up there. It's kind of haphazard the way it is, though. <laughs> and... This is what we're getting right now. Varies a little bit. And uh, won't be enough to light a white LED. I might be able to get a, a red LED to temporary flash a little bit. We'll give that a try. And there's not a whole lot of current, but you can get a LED to flash a little bit. Hold up here so you can see it.
Yeah, there's not much power. The stone cells really aren't uniform enough to be hooked in a long series like that. The weakest cell is just going to limit the whole chain, but I got some voltage out of it. To get a better reaction, you could probably take a good producing stone and then crush it up and then use that material to make a whole bunch of similar cells and hook that in a series. That might work pretty good. But anyway, you can use a stone to make a small battery cell. A pretty weak one, but you can probably get a little bit of voltage out of it. Depends on what you pick out. Every stone seems to be pretty unique, and sometimes they don't work at all, and sometimes they work a little bit backwards. Well, thanks for your time. In the rest of this video, I'm going to take another look at those backward working ones. And I have another little one right here that seems to have gone negative, too, like that iron pyrite. Test this one. Depends on where you touch it, I guess. And this is the iron pyrite. So they're kind of acting backwards, like the carbon is negative, and then like the iron pyrite is positive. You can see this is DC, and that negative sign out there means we got the probes. I should switch the probes around. It's like a tenth over a tenth of a volt backwards. It's acting like a uh, might be acting like a detector, like on a crystal radio. I think you can use Iron Pirate for that. This one here might be acting the same way. Not quite as effective. But it's like the carbon is negative and the rock is positive. And that's why you see that negative sign out there on the meter. And it depends on where you touch it. This, I suppose this is kind of acting like a cat's whisker. I don't know what this is. It's just a, a sliver I found. Must be some kind of iron in there, I guess. That's what I'm thinking. Interesting.